Hello, welcome to Scrap Time episode 1010. My name is Christine and on today's episode, we have an exclusive video with Dina Wakely. She shows us three ways to use her stencil masks and makes us this tag. Hi, I'm Dina Wakely here at Winter CHA and I'm excited to show you some of my new stamps and stencils and my new fine line applicator tip for my paint. So I'm gonna make a little tag and I'm gonna show you three ways to use a mask and then I'm gonna debut my happy clap moment which is this great tip that will screw onto your paint and it makes every tube of paint a pen so you can write on anything with your with your paint tube so that is awesome all right so on this tag I already have a very thin coat of gesso you can put gesso on thick but but there's a price you pay and that price is time <laughs> and I don't you know I usually don't put gesso on thick I put it on really nice and thin so I'm going to use all these beautiful colors of blues and greens to, to do my three different ways of masking. And if you stick to colors that um, are next to each other on the color wheel, you won't make mud. Um, you, you know, mud, mud is fine for outside, but you don't want it on your projects. So stick to colors that are close to neighbors, close, that's called analogous, on the color wheel, and you won't make mud. So I'm starting with a little blue paint, okay? And then I'm not gonna wash my brush. My brush never hits the water until I'm done painting. I might wipe it on my apron, but I don't wash it with water, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is pick up a little bit of green, and I know the green and blue make another pretty color, so I know I'm not gonna end up with something super disgusting. So when you just paint around the mask, that's traditional masking, right? So the mask is a positive shape, and when you paint around it and lift it away, you end up with the negative, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna do that maybe twice here. That's, that's way number one to use your mask. Very, very elementary, very basic. Maybe we'll do it with two colors. Maybe I'll add one turquoise one. One of the keys to layering and getting the layered look is overlapping, and what I mean is, when you add the next layer, you must overlap 25 to 50% or it doesn't count as a layer. That's gospel according to Dina. So I'm not gonna put this up here in the corner. I'm going to put it here. And when you layer, you have to sacrifice some of what's underneath, um, but that's how the layers start to interplay and peek out from under each other. If you don't overlap, it doesn't count as a layer, it counts as a floating color field okay but doesn't that look cool see how they're starting to interact and play and, and and you know get a little better so that is basic masking now this is what I showed last show that's regular masking this is called reverse masking I'm gonna get some white acrylic on my finger and let's put it let's overlap it right here I'm gonna spread enough on my tag enough paint to just be just barely bigger than the mask, okay? You could put it everywhere, but honestly, it'll, you'll just have to work so much harder later. So show it who's boss, hold it with your fingers. It's gonna be a little slippery. Rub gently. You are not polishing grandma's silver here. You are rubbing very gently because anywhere you rub away, you'll lose some of that paint underneath as well. So like here, I lost some turquoise, but it's gonna look cool later. You're, you know, you're sacrificing a little bit of that under layer for the look. So now when I pick that up, I end up with the positive of the mask instead of the negative of the mask, right? Let's do that twice. I think it needs to be up here, right? So see how I kind of start in the middle in a linear fashion? And then what I do is I move out from that center line. Um, I don't just paint willy-nilly. I overlap as I go. I start in the middle and then I fan out with my layers. So they do eventually reach the edge, but I don't start at the edge. That makes sense? Isn't that outstanding? Isn't that cool? So let me just kind of clean that off. Hey, look, that's proof that Dina cleaned a mask once. I'm just saying, look, I did it. Now we're gonna print with the mask. So this is, this is technique number three to use with masks. I'm gonna take night, and I guess I'll be um, uncivilized and just rub it on with my finger. You could paint it on with a brush or put it on with the, the mini blending tool. Now I'm putting on a lot of paint. I need this paint to be really thick on the mask because what I've learned is that when I'm printing with my masks, if, and if you're using my acrylic, which is heavy, if you don't put enough paint on it, you don't get a print. So I'm gonna kind of gob it on there, and not only am I gonna gob it on there, I'm gonna add some water. So I'm going to just go ahead, take my water mister, give it a couple sprays. Thick and goopy and delicious. Now why not, why do this? Why not just, 
do this reverse masking technique, you know, again with night. Because this is going to give me the positive of the shape, right? Anyone know? Anyone? Bueller? So the reason why I'm going to print is you get a very different look. You get a very different quality of an image. Um, a print will always look different than a direct to paper technique, okay? So I'm going to print and you have to be at peace, oh, I love it, with what happens. I'm going to add more water. Look at the fractured, delicious shape. And because I'm using the same shape throughout, because I'm not introducing too many motifs, what happens is, is I get a visual sophistication um, that, that, that I can control. Sometimes I think if you have 40 stencils, you think, oh, I think I'll use 40 stencils. Don't do that. Pick a couple and then use, you know, make 40 projects, right? Do lots of art, but don't put all 40 on a piece, okay? Isn't that delicious? What a great foundation uh, for a journal page, for a card, you know, a stamped image. I'm gonna put this little girl on here. She is um, from my new Positive Women set. I know I have lots of uh, women faces and stamps. I just can't get enough of them. I, I love them. They make me so happy. I have three teenage boys. I never had a daughter. I told them I'm holding out for granddaughters. Not soon, please, but you know, <laughs> 20 years, give me a granddaughter. And these are like my grown-up paper dolls. I, I love to play paper dolls, so to me that's kind of, they're kind of fun. So here's my little positive woman. I'm going to put her there, I think. And then let me show you my happy clap. So this is wet and goopy. Um, when this is dry, my food ball plant pen would write pretty well over just plain old dry paint. But I, I'm going to have lumps and bumps, and when you have lumps and bumps, nothing <laughs> writes over lumps and bumps. So these, these tips, they come two to a pack, so you get two of them when you buy them. Okay? You're going to take the lid off your paint, so your paint comes like this. Go ahead and take this lid off. I just throw it away because I'm, I live on the edge like that. But you could put that in a Ziploc bag if you wanted to keep it. And you're going to put screw the tip right onto your paint tube. Once it's on there, please leave it there. Don't take it off and try to wash it. There are little tiny valve parts inside this tip that I think would be a real hassle to wash. So leave it on the tip. Leave it on the tip of your paint. It won't clog. Here's why. In the lid, there's a needle. And when you put the lid back on, that needle in the lid is going to thread into the needle on the tip. And it will never clog. I live in a very dry place. And you can put, you can screw this on my gel medium tube. It won't clog. This company that made our tips has been around a long time. They've made these for years. Um, they made this one especially to screw on my paint for me because I love them. Uh, and it just, it really, I promise you it won't clog. But don't be trying to take it off and wash it and all that stuff, if that makes sense. And so then I can come here and I can, let me just get it started. Make sure that you shake the paint down into the needle. If there's air, it'll go, right? And it just will. I can come and I can add little doodling bits. I can add additions, marks. I could write with it. And it adds just that extra oomph to your project. And because my paint is heavy body, it it will have texture and dimension. So when I could leave it like that and let it dry. People say, how long will that take to dry? And I say, where do you live? You know, are you in a dry place? Are you in a humid place? I can't tell you how long it will take. Um, here, in, where we are in California, it's been raining the last couple days. So it'll take, I don't know, a, a little while, uh, 30 minutes maybe. Um, if you don't want the, the I'm gonna move her for a second. If you don't want those dots to have a point, because right now they have a point. And the reason they have a point is that my paint has that heavy body, right? And it, it, it went out of the needle like that. If you flick the bottom, it turns those points into like, like a little enamel dot. That makes sense? And I put that one there with my finger because I have paint on my hand, so I will turn an oops into a, into a wow. I never redo something, I always have a way to fix. So now I've got this delicious little red dot. And the reason why I chose red is that red is opposite green on the color wheel and I have green in my background and I know that in order to make the tag really pop I need to add some of that complementary color so pink would have worked as well I could have done um, you know a light pink I could have done the opposite of turquoise is kind of a, a red orange could have done a little bit of orange but I think the red really makes it pop don't you 
So there's my little tag. I'm gonna let that dry all the way. I'm gonna glue my sweet little positive girl on there and I'm gonna give it away to you so maybe you could admit it. Thanks for coming in and hanging out with Dina Wakely Media today. Once again, we are giving away this tag. To enter, visit www.scraptime.ca, find episode 1010 and leave a comment. The contest will close Sunday, February 15th at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And on our next episode, we have a exclusive demo with Pebio. So please join us. Thanks for watching Scrap Time.